Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another... Uh, okay, it's not It Came From The Workbench. It's It Came From The Live Stream. It is answering questions no one asked. Well, I mean, tangentially. Um, so, in between now, I'm hoping you're picking up the chainsaw. I mean... It's it's a mark of that you live someplace nice, I guess, right? Because there's trees to cut down. But my God, the amount of chainsawing that goes on around, you would think I lived in the forest. Uh, between when we last met, there's this gentleman right here, the good old VRD. Uh, we have made some small uh, basic changes, which is... Uh, we got rid of these because I detest these. Uh, we also incidentally got rid of these. I mean, you know. Uh, there he sits. And, uh... We've got a little, uh... I don't know. I don't know nothing about winching. Um... But we, we've got a winch. How long that winch is going to last, I don't know. Because we've done possibly irresponsible things. I uh, am at times, and by at times I mean pretty much exclusively, left to my own devices. So, uh, in, those, in those moments, in those situations... Uh, you know, is it a good, better, best situation? I don't know. I just I just know that we can't leave well enough alone. So we replaced carbon and aluminum with uh, carbon and 3D. I want you to take note of how of how low everything is. Like, am I right? Okay, so the winch... The, okay, where do we start? The chassis is a Zoku. So this is no longer a VRD, it's a ZRD. It's the Zoku VRD. So the VRD changes the geometry a smidgen. I took a picture. I took a picture or a couple of pictures. Uh, it has also been on the scales. We'll get to that in a moment. So, uh, the, the chassis kick goes from 5 degrees to 8 degrees. Uh, I As soon as I set it up, I said, okay, the CG went down. Just from the feel of it. Did I do the full scaling in the stock VRD format and then converted? No. Uh, no. Parts came in the mail. They were in the mailbox. And that was that. Uh, fast forward to the next day. Uh, hours and hours and hours were put in moving everything around, making all the little unnecessary adjustments, getting the shock angles set to where I think the shock angles should be set. Uh, modifying the DSM winch mount. I had to cut a little tab off here. It's supposed to be much further on the, on the stock chassis the winch mount attaches to these two holes so the winch mount is much further back it's way over here uh it even says on the little card that comes with the winch mount uh focus this kit is designed to work with the factory chassis rails don't tell me what to do uh also, because the body had been pre-mounted and pre-lowered on the existing posts, this is as high as they can go. It gets it to where the body is just at the top of the sliders. So, realistically, this body could go lower. But, the body is already so low that I had to uh, grab a, pay, a piece of ultra-high molecular weight. Uh, the hole goes in up at the top over there is drilled at the angle of that line and comes out down at the bottom. This is ultra-high molecular weight, so it's very, very slippery, uh, similar to the material that's on the bottom of a snowboard. So I have it. Oh, and also, uh, for, for those who don't know, so uh, I use this for winching, and you notice it doesn't do anything. I have it set to pay out forward. This is pull back, but... It is set up on a safety. If anybody is super curious as to how to set that up, I can do a quick tech tips video on how to set it up. But basically, if I want to pay out, and then if I switch to reverse, I'm using switch D. 
So you can't accidentally actuate the winch. It is set up uh, on, on winch safety. It's a, it's a, it's a double fail safe on the winch. So you can leave it in the center pot, which does nothing and then pay out pulling. Anyway, uh, I think that the clearance on the winch line is pretty good. Comes up out of a spool, goes through there. Is there still a risk of backlash? I think so, because this is a $20 uh, winch, Enjura winch from Amazon, uh, which I, of course, opened up, cut apart, and uh, hardwired a, I forgot to tape that down, and hardwired a Reedy SC480 onto that. The winch on it, if it's focused, says 4.8 to 6 volts. It is coming directly off that JST. So that little motor in there is getting 3S. It is getting around 12 volts, uh, which is overvolted a lot. So if it dies, if it dies, if it dies. Uh, then we will just replace it with another servo where I will do the same operation. Pull all of the guts out, pull the potentiometer out, and we are just allowing the speed control to act as the winch controller. I mean, it's hardwired to the point where I just ran the, it's just the 16 gauge wires soldered onto there. So a faster motor on a more powerful servo would probably be great. You could get that whee, really going fast, but this is more proof of concept than anything else. So got the, the Zoku installed, got the links set up where I think should be correct. Put them on the scales. Uh, I, I, I keep a picture on my phone so I know what to recite. Put them on the scales. 2,949 grams is what was given to me by the corner balancing scales. We're, we're, uh, as per usual, uh, to do full corner balancing, I use the kitchen scales because the scale pads on the scale system are this big and the scale pads on the kitchen scales are this big. It's a lot easier to get things maneuvered around because we have to weigh him nose up and nose down. 2,949 grams, perfect 50-50 crossway, one gram differential between right and left. 5941 on the weight distribution, 844 on the front right, 882 on the front left. Uh, the, these numbers are all very close to what was gotten off of the kitchen scales within like ordinarily within about five grams on any one pad or the other, which, uh, five out of a hundred would be 5%, five out of a thousand would be half a percent. So we're 80% of half a percent. So like 0.4% is the variance here. It's not enough to be concerned about because to get a true balance to get an actual legitimate number you need to replace your shocks with analogs that hold it at ride height so that you can't get any compression and you would have to uh, replace your wheels with analogs as well to take any of that deflection away so the numbers we get are something trending to the uh looks fun on paper sort of numbers but it does give us an idea because we're constantly weighing using the same set of parameters, we can tell if something got better or worse. Now, I don't know if it got better or worse because I neglected to measure it before I disassembled the VRD and turned it into a ZRD. But what I can tell you is just by looking at the picture of the way the rails overlap each other, the, I don't like that. The weight went down. How far down? It went way down. Uh, here's how you can tell. If you get into the nerdery of doing your full balancing and, and finding your CGH, where you raise the front end and weigh it, raise the rear end and weigh it, you get the numbers, you run through the calculator, which by the way, Omni Calculator, which I should have been linking to in the description of every video that has any mention of scales, uh, has been updated. It now has millimeters and, uh, f for all the measurements. It's fantastico. I was having to convert everything into pounds, or it would only have weights in kilograms, which kilograms is fine. You just do like 0.728. But I was having to do a lot of conversions to try to get the numbers, particularly for wheelbase. Now you can put in 313 for the wheelbase, which is what this is. 313 millimeters. Uh, I need to double check that. Yes. Uh, so, we weigh it front up. We weigh it rear up. We do, we let it do the trigonometry for us because I'm not about the trigonometry game. Here he is sitting like this. Here is a ruler that is both in standard imperial and metric. The CG is, so th this edge of the skid right here 
is at three and a sixteenth, what I would call about 79 millimeters. The CGH on this rig is 70 millimeters. So it is, believe it or not, if you can see on these turbines, there's the smaller little uh, cutout guy and the bigger, I guess it's easier to see on this one. There's the smaller one and the bigger one. The CG runs right through there. So the CG is basically at the rails, which is uh, trends to why I have long said, and by long, I mean for at least a couple months now, I have said that the optimal motor configuration for a VFD, particularly in one of these, is a Fusion. Because I want you to think, between last time it was here uh, being featured and now, which was not that long ago, we added the winch, which, I mean, I don't think there's a better way to do it than the DSM mount other than fully bespoke custom fabricating it yourself and getting it mounted all the way down onto the rail. Like, we could lower that seven millimeters. I mean, we couldn't, not on a, Zo not on a ZRD. The frame rail is in the way. I had to notch, I had to put a little notch right there in the frame rail to get it to clear. I mean, we, we, we gotta, we, we gotta make things happen. It says designed for the factory chassis and uh, they would have no reason to lie to us, but we're gonna make it work. Uh, the one thing that I meant to do and didn't do is somewhere here on the bench, there's a 12 tooth pinion. It is running 1048. I think it's a little bit under geared. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll, we're just going to do it 10, uh, 1048. I doubt that there will be any opportunity to use the winch. Although, here's what I want to, I want to see something. Uh, maybe we can blow that uh, motor up right now. Also, there is one very unfortunate side effect, which is I use this button for cruise control and I'm using this button for the winch. Okay. It would probably be smarter to anyone doing this to mix switch B and switch C. So this is winch direction. And then you go like that to pay, to, to activate the winch. You can set it to where both of these would be plus. So if you pull it, it'll do the winch. If you push it, it'll do the winch because if you're not a cruise control person, it's not a problem, but I keep getting them confused right now. I have cruise control set to zero. So it doesn't do anything because more than once I would reach over, I'm holding something and I reach over to actuate the winch and I hit this and the rig launches forward and drives over the keyboard that's down here and runs over everything else. So let, let's see, let's see, let's see what we're working with. Let's see. It appears, it appears to be strong enough. Now, as I said, a $20 uh, winch is not going to get you the ultimate speed. I would want something that's really cooking, but it is a $20 winch and it comes with the spool and the line and all that stuff. And it comes with metal wire too. It came with a winch hook that I didn't use. I don't like these kind of winch hooks that have the little, that's really for looks. Uh, I, I don't think that this is supremely useful, but I don't know a lot about winching. So <laughs> I don't know what people want when it comes to a winch in my drawer. I have, I would think that one of these, that would, that would be the thing, right? Uh, in the comments, people that winch, what, what do you have on the end of there? Uh, how long will your six volt servo motor last on three S direct? These are all questions that I'm either looking for answers to or that I am going to, in the short or long term, find answers to. So what we've got to do, and how good is it that we changed chassis completely on a pre-drilled, pre-mounted body? And what does everything do? It lines right up. It lines right up. Uh, I don't think that that front winch... The, the fair lead thing is the final solution primarily because I would, I would like it to actually kick the, what would be a fair lead, but it's just a beveled hole. 
I would like it to kick that out a little farther. Although, I mean, <laughs> it's like he's he's doing the malem, you know, and the little tongue sticking out. Uh, I would like that to be out a little farther. I also didn't get the holes drilled perfectly, but you know, you know, uh, what are, what are you gonna do? Uh, it, it, a buddy of mine, the blind benefactor, the man behind builds like Zarana and the GFO and Diablo. Uh, he has long been what he has been trying to instill in me is don't grab a tool intending to make the final product. It's okay to prototype. If you have to make it a second time to refine it and make it better, that's great. But when I'm doing chassis, when I'm doing things like this, there's something inside me that can't help but try to be like, we're going to make we're going to make the end all. Uh I would prefer this be out of Delrin rather than UHMW, but I don't have a piece big enough. I could take here's here's what I was thinking and what I should have done is I should have made a piece that replaces, think of it in the terms of like a bumper mount, and then make the other piece that has the fair lead and is bolted to the bottom of it. Then I can adjust the spacing on it. We can we can move it around. We can fi we can figure things out. But for the time being, do you see him? This will work. And now we're going to see if this will work. Uh, the VRD was very capable. I call it the best RTR you can buy because you don't need to change anything. And if you don't need to change anything, what's the first thing you do? You change stuff. You change it. You turn it from a VRD into a ZRD because I, I honestly, I prefer this geometry, the way everything goes together. Uh, flex goes up. Flex goes up on the stock shocks. We flex in a lot. CG goes down. I can just feel it when, when you pick it up. You can feel that it goes down. And handling will be the question because I chose shock and link positions almost at random. So we, we have a real Injora Vanquish mashup, which I know will offend some of the Vanquish loyals. But, uh, you know, if it works, it works. So I guess what we should do now is go out and uh, bear some chainsaw and find out if it works. We're cutting down about a 20 footer. 20, maybe a 25 footer and uh, it looks like they've just they haven't even topped it yet so we're gonna get some chainsaw it should make no difference whatsoever we're gonna get a little rub so shock angle is a little more laid down is it laid down enough to go up rate Maybe. I think we need to go up one rate all the way around. It's running, I want to say, if memory serves, uh, Element Greens, which is 0.7 in the front, and Deluxe Softs, which are 0.8 in the rear. So I'd probably just go to like 0.8 in the front and like either 10 Pro or around a pound. One pound, 1.1 in the rear. Although the ascending feels downright solid this is point and shoot stuff and that suspension is doing the work and angry lexan noises are effectively minimized this is oh i see okay we're getting a little col over collapse it's let's see if we can center it up for you get right about here if i go like this right there see it's that very front, it's the opposite of where I would think it would be rubbing. It's rubbing right at the front end. And only at full lock. But my goodness, the drive. Yeah, I mean, pins are cheating. Everything here is cheating as far as I'm concerned. Every time I put a Zoku in something, I feel like it's cheat codes. I did not anticipate, like, it goes from a five degree skid to an eight degree skid. It, it moves the link geometry a tiny little bit, but it doesn't, and by, by that I mean that the holes are in a slightly different place. The chassis plates, as you saw, they don't, they don't overlap each other perfectly. Uh, the shock tower, the top of the shock tower is closer to the center of the rail now. But, oh, here we go.
it is an it is a simply absurd amount of drive and because like, look how look that body is slammed uh i don't feel any any negatives uh so this may potentially be one of those good better best situations like why leave well enough alone it keeps all four down even more easily than it did before. This thing already is making me uh, feel like we're gonna have to forgo the usual spots and just go places. Oh my. Oh my. <sighs> Sprung to unsprung got worse because we put a winch and a second speed control on it, but the impact is not felt. There's chassis weight, but that weight is so low now. Unless a tire gets stuck, it, it, you, you just go. I wanna come around down this way. Oh, the descending is ridiculous. The turning circle is why we love 38 now. I want to see, can we even, can we get a little piece of this? I'm trying to position it right there. The no side lug is kind of biting us a little bit. This is way too, I, we don't try this, right? We don't come here because that right hand side, there's not enough over there. Yeah, you can get, you can get a real dummy with this. You can get a real dummy. Uh, someone on Instagram was doing their very best to convince me that the ZRD is a transformative experience uh, compared to the typical VRD experience. And I mean, he might be right. Like this makes the, every it makes everything so far just seem more effortless. It is like, this is <laughs> up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. What is it? Circle square. We've put in a cheat code. Shouldn't be this different, but it really is. So we might as well go right at it. Oh, the overcast makes him look very vibrant blue. Whoop, whee! A little more this way. I, I literally got stuck under the fence right there. We've got all the grip that we could conceivably want. We've got an absurdly low center of gravity. It's a tough spot right here because it's like, it's in between. So we're gonna try going over this slab here. And there's no, at no point does it feel like, oh, we're gonna get that poppy transfer where the weight swings to the back. Maybe the, uh, maybe the springs are absolutely fine. Oh, I do wish I had dig right here, even with the 38. I want, I want to, I want to drop off right here. I'm, I'm, here's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for the spot where, where it gets really loose on me. doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. Oh my gracious. Even with that wheel up on high. Yeah, it's, it's almost dig. I just love dig. 
flex it through. Straight cut. I mean, got a little over aggressive on the catch there. <laughs> so a little, little too much speed introduced. This is one of the hardest little approaches right here because your rear tires get into this spot right there cut it back cut it back I just need to get that rear there's that little lip push it push it okay reset it back come in more this side okay can we can we go we'll try the side wallet across the top oh that's lifting the cheat here is push it to the right but I want to come right up through this middle I just need to get some grab right there and then right there. Ridiculous. There, th he's not a fisherman. This thing can't fish because there is no catch of the day. He just catches himself. Uh, it, it, it's almost a when in doubt throttle out. Like, I powered down and he just put the rear end back down. It never wants to swap ends. I don't even know if that was in frame. But as I'm sure we know, uh, just doing the thing in general is fairly easy. Uh, doing the thing specifically is when it can get difficult. Hug in on the white. Yeah, this is gate five at front nine. That's not an easy gate. Um, Unless you're this guy. Uh, unless you have all the cheat codes installed. Fusion Pro. Pins. ZRD. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. How repeatable is that? Okay, got a little spicy. Got a little spicy. Yeah, I might know the entry built it over there ordinarily we get more push we get pushed to the left we're getting a little bit of push right there 38 percent coming back i can play off of that top one a little bit come back I'll try to cut it a little bit more left right there i mean what 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 can you say? So let's go for that ultimate expression of hubris. We've got six, seven, and eight in frame. Uh, eight is, oh, I don't know, that's gotta be close to 20 feet away. Right, everybody's got a different approach to six. Every rig is a little different. I think we will have enough pin bite to not knock the yellow guy off. This is a don't let off the gas situation. We knock the yellow guy off. That's exactly where I wanted to be though. It is, a, it is not a game of inches, it is a game of millimeters. We're gonna crab across. Ordinarily, we reset to bottom and come back around this, but we're not going to. Just like, it's like driving glue. Should have rolled out right there. There we go. So we take the cheap uh, and free reset to bottom. Oh, the drive. The drive. Oh. Yeah, I am, I am too far away to do this properly, but it's, this is aim small, miss small. We're just brushing these things out. Okay, I can't see this at all. This is one of my worst gates, eight. I have a really hard time with this one for these reasons. I can't see the yellow and through from like 20 plus feet away. And of these three, that's the hardest gate for me, is eight. I have the biggest problem with eight. 
what a what a thing this is. What a thing this is. Like it's got a winch on it, but for what? Okay, there's plenty of tough picks over here. Hannah Montana, West Side. Come across this little flat right here. Tends to want to push the rear end around. See if the pin will grab enough to swing us back. We're doing a little half dig. 40% dig maneuver here. I need to grab that point right there. Okay, kind of fell back. Get that grab. Get that grab. I need to I need to pull over. I need to stay a little higher, I think. Okay, well maybe. Maybe he's got a different way of going about it. Oh, had it, had it. Had it and lost it. Okay, right there. Don't let that slide back. Still getting the slide. Okay, we've hooked, 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 hooked. Okay. Need to pull around. That might be a little too vertical. We can get the link over it. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? You just pick a spot and you go there. Ah, oh, man. It's really good. It's really good. Is it ZRD over VRD? I mean, it shouldn't make that much of a difference. It shouldn't. It's not explicitly explicable. Three degrees of skid and a little bit of link position change. But it, moving that tower closer to the rail has to just drop the CG to a point where we're doing different stuff now. We're playing a different game. I don't, I'm not trying to oversell it, nor would I, you know, you've got a VRD. The VRD Carbon, best RTR money can buy because it's a kit. So there's nothing you need to throw away. You don't need a ZRD in it. But man, it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. It's really, really good. If you own a stance, there, it's imperative that you put a ZRD in it. This is just making something... I don't know where we landed. This is just making something that's already almost too good, too better. I can't claim any responsibility for that landing. He's just... he's got a really low CG. So we've got a line on this side that is easier. Get up, there's a little in between the wheelbase. We get over that. We can swing up right here. That's just driving down the, the parkway here. We've got, we've got a left-hand cut, which is unfriendly, really unfriendly. Trying to pick a spot right here that ordinarily we don't even try to pick a spot because it's not gonna happen. We can get over that. We are gonna lose all forward grip here, right there. Oh, is that the first time we've rolled this guy? It might be. That Krylon flat is tough. Okay, I'm gonna go right here. This is one where anything close to the center Gonna, is that going to drop? I don't feel any transfer. No. Ooh. We got the slider in. Okay, that might, that might, cons that might constitute. That was a catch. That was a catch all the way. Look at this. What is this thing? What is it even? That's vertical. Just kind of scrabbling sideways. Mar marring up those sliders a little bit. I think it's too 
steep right there. I think we, I think we can wrap it. Into the bush. Uh, black nightshade is where he's resting right now. Uh, it follows in the canyon theme of plants that are either invasive, obnoxious, lethal, or some combination of all of them. We've got datura, we've got tree tobacco, and uh, now we've got black nightshade, which is not the same as deadly nightshade, but uh, it does say that under no circumstances do you want to eat or ingest any part of that plant. So that's why it gets to stay, because it, it fulfills. I mean, the only thing I think we'd remove would be cactus, because then we're gonna roll rigs into it and have cactus spines in all of our tires. So I could, I could quite, this is just fun. It's like, if you do this, if you, if you go ZRD, uh, you're gonna ruin, you're gonna ruin whatever you have. Like your crawling spot, you ruined it. Uh, you're gonna have to find, this is power creep. This ZRD is 100% power creep. You're just gonna be looking for harder things to do. You will search for hard lines. And if that's your goal, I gotta climb up there and get that. If that's what you're feeling like, then I mean, it's not a no brainer, it's not a no doubter. It's just so much better than I would have thought it would be. Yeah. It's really good. Is this thing done? This thing is definitely close to done. We'll get him in some other, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get him in some head to heads and whatnot, but I mean, other than that, I'm suitably impressed. I'm suitably impressed that all of you have decided to turn out yet again for another trip to the canyon. I thank you for being here. I uh, hope to see you in the next one. In between now and then, I would at least hope that you would, one and all, try your very best to have a good one, everybody. We will see you next time here from the canyon. We cannot drive out of frame. He is wheels down. Wait. Uh, it's like there's a monster. I can't even see what's happening over there now. I'll see you next time, everybody.